Okay, so let's take a look at a, uh, another problem. So this is question five in that same problem set. And again, um, we're going to set it up right from scratch. So we're not going to use the hint of the diagram. And we'll see if we can figure out uh, something about this problem and work through the quantities that are given and then looking at what the unknowns are. So it's a little different than question number one in the fact that it's a little more complicated to get to the solution, but we'll see if it makes sense as we as we work through it. So let's start here. It says uh, Manuel lives on the southeastern tip of the Bermuda Triangle in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Okay, so one of the things with a question like this is when they start to use compass directions, you do need to have some perspective of how the problem is set up. So it's a good idea to maybe just on the side somewhere, just draw the compass uh, grid in. So if you're not familiar with it, north is up, south is down, and then west and then east. West is to the left and east is um, to the right. So there's, um, it says where he lives on the southeastern tip of the, the Bermuda Triangle. So we do know it's a triangle because that's what it's saying. And it's in the, one of the points is in the southeast. So I'm just going to put a dot on the screen and that is going to be um, the southeastern part. Okay, so if it was in the grid, it's in the, the lower part of it there. And then he flew from his hometown to Bermuda, from his hometown to Bermuda, a, a, a direct distance of 961 kilometers. So that tells us a distance. Now we do need to know where the direction is a little bit um, for this. So that is really why they provide the map to, be, to begin with. But if you looked at a map, of this, of this location, Bermuda would be north of his location. So we could draw one side of this, let's try to get that a little bit straighter, um, one side of this as just being a line that goes north. Okay, and we don't know the scale of it right now, we just know that it's going to be north of, of his direction. And But we do know a distance, it's 961. And then he took a second flight from Bermuda to Miami. So this is the third leg of the triangle. So again, it does help to have a map to reference the geography. But we do know that um, Miami is, in, is south of the Bermuda area. So we can just put a dot somewhere south of it, kind of in the same general direction as his, his first point, his first city there. And we'll connect the two sides together. So this will give us... Our triangle that we're working with. All right. Now we don't know if this is a perfect triangle in terms of like a rectangle, uh, like a right angle triangle, or an isosceles triangle where the two sides are the same. Um, and, it, and it really doesn't make much of a difference. We just need to put in some of the numbers. Um, so it does say that the second flight from Bermuda to Miami was a distance of a thousand and thirty-six kilometers. So we'll put that in as a value there. So I guess we could just label some things here. I'm just going to put B for Bermuda, S for San Juan, and M for Miami. And then he needs the angle from Miami to the other two corners of the triangle is 54 degrees. Okay, so that tells us that my we look at the corner of Miami, the other two cities, the angle that they're apart is 55.4 degrees. Okay, so that's the only thing that we know. Now, he needs to charter a plane to fly him back home that will charge him a dollar for every kilometer. He has a thousand dollars, so does he have enough to charter the plane to return? Okay, so what they've done is they've added a little bit of a complication to this problem because they're giving you sort of a cost value which has to be compared to the distance. So that last part of the question is a little bit um, it's not necessary for us to solve at this point. We don't have to worry about it. What we really need to know here is how far is the plane to, how far is the distance from Miami back to San Juan? Okay, and then we can worry about the cost or the dollar value later. So what is this question asking? All right, so let's just go through our steps that we did before. First, we do our sketch, which we've done. Okay, and we label. Okay, and we also then try to simplify it. Okay, so we've simplified our problem in the fact that we, we now know the general location. We've just given simple labels and distances. 
Um, so it looks like we're good with that. We don't have to worry about like any extra information here. Um, and again, I would um, just forget about the, the dollar value for this at this point, because that's going to be something that we'll just look at at the very end. And then the part here we need to do is what are we finding? Okay, and this is where we have to be, just read the question carefully. So he needs to charter a plane to fly him back home. So that's what we want to do. Because remember, this is home is here. Okay, and he is already in Miami. So we are looking at the distance between um, M for Miami going back to S for San Juan. Okay, the M to S leg. And we're only given one angle value and then two of the distances there. So this is a... Um, a question that requires it looks like it's going to might require a couple of steps to figure out so I'm just going to change color and what we'll do is I'm going to put in the letter X here for what we need to find okay so this is going to be our X value and if there was any way that we could look at getting this this answer um, like right away is there a possibility of doing that like we did in question one so let's just start looking at um, some formulas here. Okay, and I'm going to purposely kind of go off track a little bit just so that we can kind of take a look at some different ways that, we're, that you might end up doing this when you're, when you're trying a problem like this. So we first said that we need to look at side angle pairs. Okay, we know we're using the sine law. And from question one, it was pointed out that the side angle pair is one of the most important things to, to look at. So, if we look at our diagram, we have 961 being directly across from 55.4. So that means we could do the following. We could write down um, sine of 55.4 over 961 because that's going to be one of our side pairs okay is equal to something that could involve x okay so well we know x is our unknown that's our distance but the problem we run into here is we don't know what the angle is directly across from x so if i take and use another color to point that out i'll use pink here okay the x is here but what is this angle right here? Okay, so that is, we, if we were trying to do this, and I don't know what the angle is, I'm just going to use a question mark. We have two unknowns at this point. We have the x, which is the distance, but we also don't know what the angle is directly across from that. So that presents a problem. So if you started down that path with this question and we set up the equation to find x, you would quickly run into this question of like, well, I'm missing one quantity here. Okay, so I am missing um, the angle across from x. All right, so what to do in a question like this? Well, we could try looking for another ratio or another angle pair to work with. Okay, so this, this one doesn't get us very far. But so let's just start looking at question. We'll do another equation. We'll call it equation two here. We still have the same angle pair that we are working with. So it still has to be sine 55.4 over 961. But now what is the other um, value that's given in our question that we could potentially figure out. So there is another distance here, okay? It is the 1036 distance, okay? But we don't know what the angle is right now at that point. So I'm going to put that in just a different color here. I'll use this one here. Okay, we have another question mark here, okay? And again, the question mark is just going to be a variable, all right? So in this case, we could say, well, I know now three of these values, okay, different than the first equation. So I could use here, and I'll just keep it in this color here, sine of the question mark, OK? 
okay, this, this particular color this, uh, that we're looking for. So this will let us calculate what that, that variable will be, okay, that unknown will be. So let's go with this question and we'll try to figure it out. So I'm going to use a, a variable there for, for that value. We can call it like y, all right? And then again, we're making it easy for ourselves. So I'm going to leave the unknown on top. So we can rewrite this equation. Um, let's just do some cross multiply right away to get to simplify this. All we have to do is bring the 1036 up and multiply by sine 55.4 and then divide the whole thing by 961. And we're gonna say that's equal to a new value and we're gonna call it sine y. So I will put in a value here, a variable here for y, okay? So this gives us an opportunity now to calculate an angle. Now it's still not the, the variable x that we're really looking for, but it does allow us to fill in another part of this triangle here. So when we do this question, okay, when we work it out, we're going to see sine y is equal to, this is going to be a decimal, it should be approximately 0.8874. Okay, and then to calculate angle y, okay, we always have to take the inverse of that decimal, inverse sine function, and that will produce a decimal of 62.5 approximately. Okay, so that tells us something now that we can figure out what this question here is. We know that's going to be 62.5 degrees. Okay, so now we still haven't found X though. What we've actually done is we've had to go out and find another piece of, um, of, of this problem, which they never really asked us for, but it's, it's key, it's critical for us to figure this one that went out. Okay, so now how would we look for x? Well, we do have an equation, and it's equation one here, okay, where, but we still don't know what that missing angle is in pink. Okay, so we have to do another, another step here. Let's find the remaining missing angle. Okay, so this is really common in a question like this. You, you often have to go and find a whole bunch of other pieces of, of the geometry in order to actually get to solving the one that we're looking for. So we know this is a triangle and triangles add up to 180 degrees in terms of their total internal angles. So we know two of them. So that means that our angle, our missing angle, okay, the missing angle is simply going to be 180 degrees minus 62.5 minus the current known one, 55.4. That will give us a value of 62.1. So it's almost, it's really close to almost what the other one is. Okay, that's question three. So if I go back into the problem, okay, I will switch back to pink and I will write in the missing value here as 62.1 degrees. Okay, so now what we have here is we know all three angles in this question now, which means that our side angle pairs are almost complete. So we can now go back to question one or equation one and solve for X. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna take this down, okay, and then we will go we can go back and solve equation one, okay, number one for x, okay, because we do know what the missing angle is, all right? So again, what we can do is we can make things a little bit easier for us here, okay? We really, if I look back at question one here, well, let's just put the x value on top because it's equal to what we want to find. So this is going to be, um, let's just change it around a little bit. Let's put our distances on top. So we're going to have 961 all over sine 55.4. Okay, because remember we can, as long as we flip everything consistently, we'll, we'll be fine. And then the X is now the distance on top and we have sine 
of the missing angle, which is 62.1. So this just makes it easy for us to do a simple cross multiply. Okay, and do the angle and then divide it by the bottom trig function. And then x in this case is going to be equal to, when we work that out as a decimal and make sure your calculator is in degrees, approximately 1031.8. So that is our distance. This is the number we're looking for in the problem. Okay, but they, and then like a lot of word problems, they'll add a little extra to it because it really, the question is really almost a yes or no problem. It says, does he have enough to charter a plane to return home? Okay, and he only has a thousand dollars and it costs a dollar for every kilometer to travel. All right, so the question is, um, how much is this trip? Okay, if it is a dollar, per kilometer. Well, a dollar per kilometer at 1,031 uh, kilometers would mean that it, this would cost him $1,031.80. So if he only has $1,000, the answer is no. He cannot make the trip. And that would be the, the answer tech to this word problem, but there are several steps going through forward with it. Okay, so just to recap what we did here is we drew a diagram, okay, and a common question that you will see in many word problems is to use a compass direction or a compass grid. So, so make sure that is something that you understand how to do north, south, east, and west in relative terms. Um, we need to sketch our map out and label everything, okay? And then as these problems get a little more complicated, okay, you just, you, we have to go through it systematically, but we always look for side angle pairs using the sine law and just try to solve for the missing unknown right away. Because what that told us is it told us we were still missing a piece of information, okay? We tried to find X, so I'll just put that in pink here. Okay, but it led us to indicate, it led us to writing an equation where we had to take the sign of a value that we still didn't know. So in a sense, in essentially we have two unknowns here. Okay, so then we need to try something else. So we will use the sine law again, same angle pair that we know, but we'll try a different value. And that let us calculate the unknown angle. Okay, which was 62.5. And then from that angle, okay, and you have to be, it takes a little bit of experience to put all these steps together. Okay, that leads us into finding the, another missing angle and then allowing us to finally solve the quantity that we really wanted. So th this problem to do it properly does take at least three thinking steps in order to get it done. And then to answer it fully you need to apply what they're asking for that little bit of extra information at the end of the problem um, in order to fully answer it okay so that is one way to do this question it's um, probably the, the one of the more complicated ones um, where they've given you the sign law word problems um, because it's a multi-step problem but um, I'd encourage you to go try some of the other questions in that section um, just to see if you can get a feel for that and then see how that goes.